Oh, hey there, you awesome bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs. My name is Little Wolf, and welcome to my den. Go ahead, come on in, but please wipe your paws before entering, and take a seat by the fire. My cauldron's still going, so you can have your coffee, tea, or hot chocolate. <coughs> Ooh, hot water. Okay. I was going to kind of talk about ghosts and things like that today because of certain events going up against a certain YouTuber out there who shall not be named but sometimes he's called JL Truth but I was doing some research and one of the ways I do that is a little podcast called The Hillbilly Horror Stories and they have a little offshoot series that was called Hillbilly Youngins, which was done by their daughter and granddaughter. And it was to sort of help a younger audience get into the paranormal aspects of life. And it was definitely one of my favorite little things to listen to because it was a bite-sized entry into things and so you would usually get about mm, 10 15 20 minute episodes or so and they would talk about different things like uh, ufos or bigfoot encounters and things like that but i had clicked on to their show and downloaded their latest episode and sadly it was going to be their last episode and it brought to mind other podcasts that I listened to for a long time that since life would get in the way they would have to stop recording and I really do enjoy the Hillbilly Youngin show because it was just a, a fresh take on what it is in the paranormal world and why we believe in the things we are, we do. And it was so fun to listen to the mother and the daughter banter back and forth once in a while and talk about a subject that would kind of be serious but take it into a very lighter note and I'm not gonna lie it did make me tear up knowing that their little show was going to stop airing but they're still gonna be around with their uh, father and grandfather show the Hill hillbilly horror stories and if you get a chance to and you do like paranormal activity and things like that i highly recommend that you check out their show because the banter between the two hosts which are husband and wife is just so amazing and they also gave me the idea during my holiday stories episode to put in the suicide hotline number for anybody who needs to talk to someone about any of the dark feelings that they're having and that's another reason why I tell people you know I'm pretty much always online I sleep maybe three to five hours a night and so I spend the rest of my time on my phone and talking with different people on discord but let's get back to the little subject at hand. One of the first podcasts I ever really listened to was a show called Horror Etc. And they were a couple of friends that had got together at least once a week and would talk about different offshoots of horror. And they would talk about zombie movies, vampire movies, werewolf movies, 
and they even at one point were going to talk about just about every movie made in the 80s and I think they got through maybe five of the years because they would take an episode and they would go through a list of movies made within a certain year in the 80s and it's definitely worth listening to and I will definitely put a link in the description of this show for that one because someone was nice enough to take all of their episodes and put them into a little archive for all of the rest of time or as long as the internet is still on and I really cannot emphasize enough how great the show was because they really made made it feel like you were just sitting on the couch talking with a couple of friends about horror movies that you like and they like and that's one of my favorite things about podcasts is you can find a podcast just on just about anything that you really like and it's a good way to pass the time for anywhere from 15 minutes to some of the ones that I listen to are about three hours long. But this show itself ran for about eight years and I think I started listening to them within their second year of doing their show. I'm trying to remember all the way back then because it was I think 2007 2006 7 somewhere around there that I had started listening to them and I was googling uh, things on Night of the Living Dead or zombie movies and I wasn't really finding what I had wanted but their name kept popping up and so I clicked on it and at first it was one I didn't know what to think about it because I had never listened to a podcast and I'd never really been one for talk radio but the more I listened to some of their other shows the more I really started to enjoy them because at one point they go through all of the Jason movies in about three or four episodes and then at another point they go through all of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies in about three or four episodes and there's also a little treat after the Nightmare on Elm Street ones that I'm not going to give away because they didn't give it away to us either as we were listening And I would like you guys to be surprised as well if you do look them up. And again, I highly, highly recommend this show to anybody who loves horror movies. Because they have such a great rapport together. And they would have another host that they would bring on from time to time. And just the love and care they put into their show and their entertainment for us people sitting at home just wanting to listen to something good you could tell how much they really did care about what they were putting out and the fact that the show ran for eight years showed their dedication to it And their first episode, if I'm not mistaken, was just after the Halloween remake had come out, done by Rob Zombie. And they both really wanted to get together and just start talking about that movie. And as the show went on, you could see them slowly... I'm not going to say they didn't care, it's just that different things in life were making it difficult for them to record. And so, 
they finally had to get to the point where they just said we can't record anymore because the quality of our show is not going to be as good. One of the hosts had just started working with a different company and he puts out little audio dramas and things like that and he works with people like Tony Todd and others like that within the horror industry bringing out audio dramas. And the other guy had just life happened to him and so that it was making it really hard to record anymore. And I'm kind of sorry with this episode, it's kind of a little more personal to me. And if you're still following me this far, thank you. But for me, when something ends, especially when it's something like a podcast that I listen to from week to week for years on end. When something like that ends, it's like you're losing some friends in your life, and you know they're still out there, you know they're still doing okay, but a little part of you is really sad because you're not going to hear any new things from them. But like I said, someone was awesome enough to go ahead and archive all of their shows and put them up on the internet. And now, the next one isn't really a podcast that ended, but it was a network that ended. And that was the Simply Syndicated Network and they were run out of the UK. And I found them actually because of the Horror Etc. podcasts. At one point they did a thing they like to call the book club episode. Or wait, it was a Horror in Comics. And they brought on a guy onto their show and I just loved listening to his voice, and he was funny and just very knowledgeable about the comics and things that he was talking about. And he said he was part of a network that was called Simply Syndicated and on a show called Starbase 66. Now, thankfully, they were able to restart their podcast after the fall of Simply Syndicated. But with Simply Syndicated, they had, good lord, uh, at least a dozen different podcasts that I like to listen to. Um, there was one called The Little Podcast of Horrors. They had see here, um, The Masters of None, which was just a, a very funny, funny little show where they would just come on and talk about random topics and things like that. And that's kind of how I do my show, but they had at least three different hosts. I mean, there were just so many different shows on there that were really good. They had one called the Atomic Trivia War 9000, and that was one where the host himself, he loved trivia shows and things like that, and so he thought he would gather together a few good friends and just ask them different random trivia questions. Sometimes they would have a certain topic, like things from Nintendo. Is it from the Nintendo? Is it from the Super Nintendo? Is it from Sega? But they would just have such a fun rapport themselves, because one, I think, was from Washington, one was from Canada, and I think the other one was from the state somewhere I forget now. It's been a long time since I listened to them. 
and they had another show called Hooked, which they would talk about different drugs that people would get addicted to. But instead of just talking about the bad aspects of the drugs that people would get addicted to, they would talk about also the good benefits of what would happen when you take these certain substances in moderation the way it actually should be. And they also had one about, uh, I think it was crimes against food, where they would talk about different foods that they would run across and how either America messed up the recipe or France messed up the recipe. And let's face it, France, we love you, but we know you don't care. But they would just have a fun talk about different foods. And I'm kind of rambling about this, but it's, some of these shows were a big part of what I would do at night, because as, as much as I like music, I really love it. But sometimes you don't want to listen to something that's only three, four minutes long, and then go to something random. I know some people out there do that. But for me, it helps me to focus a little bit more when it's a set topic. And that's really a lot of what the podcast would do for me. Because like I said, some of them would only have like a half hour episode. Some would have an hour episode. And others would have three hour long episodes. And also at the time, I would walk from work to home. And depending on where I was working at the time, it could be a three-hour walk, it could be an hour walk, or something like that. But it would give me something to listen to as I was walking through the bike trails and walking through the sidewalk streets and everything else. And it was a good way for me to pass the time. And I'm not really sure if you can find any of the Simply Syndicated episodes anymore. Like I said, I know you can get the Starbase 66 episodes, because they do have a thing on Facebook now, and they put out episodes almost at random. Sometimes it's a weekly thing, sometimes it's every other week sometimes once a month, but it was one of those shows that when I found out that it was ending, it really made me sad. And then later on when I found out that they had started up again, and I started their episode, and I heard their music, it really touched me because you realize how close some of these things can become to us. And I've kind of rambled on a little bit longer than I wanted to about that network, but like I said, they had some really good shows. And if I can find any places where you can download some of their shows, I'll definitely put them in the description. And the last example of this would be a show that was called The Signed In Podcast. And because of that, they were more of a Microsoft, Xbox um, gaming network where they would talk about games you could find on the Xbox, um, either on the Xbox uh, store or you could find them in and buy them and play them on the Xbox or on the computer if they were cross-compatible. But it was, the, it was the different comedy that each person brought to the shows that really made it fun to listen to. 
and they would talk about many, many different games, and it was a show, I think, that went on for, I want to say, a decade? And they were one that would come out once a week, at least, and talk about games. And they were just so funny to listen to, and really would make you laugh. And, oh my god, it got me into so many different games that I wasn't sure I would try or not. Or even would point out different mobile games that you could play. Because at one point, one of the hosts, his Xbox, got the Red Ring of Death. And to ever isn't an Xbox person, you might not know what it is, or you might, because lots of people talked about it and complained about it, but his machine got the red ring of death, and his computer, I don't think, could run too many of the higher games, so he would talk about either mobile games or indie games that he was able to play. And this is definitely one that they do still have their episodes up online for you to find. And I, I will definitely put that one into the description because they're older episodes, but it's still going back to people that I really care about because they would come out once a week and just have fun and talk about different games, which is a big thing with me. And at some point I would probably like to come out and maybe do some mobile games that I have found, because there are lots of things that people say about mobile games that a lot of them are just terrible, they're not fun, uh, you can't find any good ones, but I've been playing mobile games for a long time now, and I have found so many good ones, and I would probably like to go through my Google library and pick out one or two, and maybe do something called like the Mobile Minute, and just talk about a couple of mobile games, because there are so many out there that I have found that are definitely worth playing and definitely worth sinking your time into, especially if you like the genre of the game. The latest one that I found right now is a little game called Bullet Echo, and it's just a game where you and a team of three other players are going through and trying to kill the other opponents, so it's a battle royale type game, and it's an over-the-top view, and from watching Team Skeptic play his games and watching all the fun that they would have, I wanted to try and find a game that was almost like that, and I did for a moment with Free Fall but I kind of lost interest in that one. But Bullet Echo, I started playing it the other night, and it was one of those games where it's like, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. And the next thing you know, it's three hours later. And, oh my god, it's just... The little battles within the game are fun and just amazing. They're quick. I mean, most of them, if you're lucky, they'll last five minutes, but then you get different um, upgrades for your characters. You don't really get new guns, but you can get new skins for them. You find different equipment that'll make it easier in the game to see further or things like that, and I'm going off on a tangent on this game, and I should kind of save it for when I do the actual review of it. But back to Signed In. Um, one of my favorite things that they did for a few years was during their Christmas episode, 
at the end of the episode, one of the hosts would go through the last year of episodes, and that's a lot of episodes to go through, because if it's one episode a week, you're talking about 48 different episodes. But he would go through the episodes and take out little clips of the funny things that they would say. And he would put a compilation together and stick it in at the end of their Christmas episode. And if I could remember exactly which episodes did that, I would tell you which ones to download. But I would just say go through their archive of shows and listen to them because they are so fun, they're funny, and it'll even maybe get you to play some of the games that they talk about that you decided not to try. But, you know, I'm sorry I'm kind of rambling about this, and like I said, these ones are kind of personal to me. And I know some people will probably get this way if a TV show they like ends, or a movie series that they like ends, or something like that, or a book series that they really like. But when it comes to podcasts, I think it's a little bit more personal, because at, with them, they're specific subjects that you do like, and you look up, and you want to hear just about all you can about that subject. And with these people taking this, whatever amount of time it would take to record a show, edit a show, and put it out, um, some of them I know they say it would take them up to four days to edit together a show that they felt would be good enough to put out. And with some of that, with my little show here, I can kind of see and understand that kind of a little pain that they would have to go through to put out an episode. Um, one of my toughest ones that I did was my um, review of the Christmas Carol movie. Because watching the movie and taking the little snapshots of it and then inserting my little avatar into the scene somewhere and then having to stitch together the audio that I put for the show and trying to make sure it matches up with the picture on the screen, I can really see how it can be tedious to make a show that people like listening to. And I'm so glad that I know of at least a paw full of you out there that really like my show. And I talk to you guys on a regular basis and you guys tell me how much I help you get through your day, or through your week, or help you relax, and that's exactly what I want to do with my channel. And I'm sorry my topics are really all over the place, but I don't really want to have a set topic that I'm going to talk about every week because I like so many different things and I want to introduce people to many of those things that they maybe might want to look into or they thought they didn't have an interest in it but I just want to have fun with my channel and to just entertain you guys for just Sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes hour and a half, I think is the longest at this point my little software will let me do up to, but I just, it's the kind of thing that got me into wanting to do my show, because 
I want to have fun with this, and I'm having a blast recording my episodes and stitching them together, and then hearing from you peoples that you are enjoying my show, and it means a lot to me, and it really makes me feel like my channel is worthwhile. And if there's certain topics that I bring up later on, or I have brought up in the past, that you don't want to listen to, I'm sorry. But they're just things that pop into my head, and if it's in there, I need to get it out of there. But I try to come out with the show at least three times a week, somewhere around there. And so if you don't like a certain topic that I'm talking about, just wait a few days and there will be something else up. And I just want to thank you guys so much again for following me this far. Now I'm up to 110 subscribers and that just means so much to me that you guys want to come into my den and listen to this idiot Dean from Alaska ramble on about movies, games, podcasts, or whatever pops into my head. And I just want to help you guys just take a break from the stupid, because there's a plenty of it that's going on now. We just lost the orange Cheeto stain in the White House, so that's a good thing. We can breathe a little bit deeper and feel a little bit better. And know that within at least the next four years, hopefully things will get better. We have so much happening in our little community of the debunkers that the flat earth is finally dying, at least we hope so. A certain water heater creeper is finally giving up his channel. Um, Nathan Thompson, again, has lost his stuff. Oh, sorry. And, let's see here, Globebusters have ended their stuff, and we know that they're going to pop up again later in the future, because, you know, much like an unwanted rash, they come back. But, the more they come back, the more we'll fight them. And King Crew, I will definitely stand side by side with you in the chats and defend us from the stupid. I do try and make a good guard wolf. And if you guys see a certain lady in the chats, either Amber Q or Alaskan Angel, know that that's one of my best friends in the world. And... I'm staying with her right now, and without her, so much of my stuff that I put out and put up, it would be so much harder to do without her. Because like I said before, she really pushed me to <coughs> do my first episode, and without that, I probably wouldn't have started my channel. And I think I've rambled on enough. My throat's really dry. <laughs> but do know that I do have lots of different episodes in my head that I've got to put out and edit together and everything else. And I hope, like with some of the podcasts I mentioned, I hope that I can at least run five years and keep putting out episodes for people to listen to because I just want to have fun I want you guys to relax and I want us all to make make it through this awful pandemic that's happening we can make it we've made it through worse but this is one of the tougher things that we've had to try and fight through and it's not just here in America, it's the whole world that is having to deal with this. 
and it's the first time in a long time that it's a global thing. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> but we are now seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with the different vaccines that are in the works and are being tested and things like that. So we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And we all have to share our one little planet that's in such a big universe. So let's try and make it easier for one another. Try and be kind. Try and be civil. Be friendly if you can. And if you have nothing nice to say, then, well, tell it to me and I'll probably say it for you. I love all of you guys so much, and thank you so much for following me and listening this far if you have. And if you've listened this far, put a story into my email of something that had made you happy. And maybe, if you want me to, I'll read it out. I'll put my email into the description and I'll go through them and I'll select a certain few and I'll read them out if you would like me to. But it's something that I kind of want to do with my channel and people want to hear me read things and without having to go to short stories and things like that. How about we read some positive stories and some happy stories? Something that made you smile. And hopefully it will make somebody else smile. Because that's something the world needs a lot more of right now. We need smiles. We need love. And we need support. Because we're not going to make it out of this alone. We're not going to make it out of this without our own scars. But we will make it out and know that as long as I'm around, my den will always be open to anybody who needs a break from the world and a break from the stupid. You want some coffee, you want some tea, hot chocolate, you need an ear to bend, I'm here. Find me in the chat, hit me up there. Find me on Discord or something. Email me and I'll get back to you. I'm just about always around. And I really do care about our community. I care about my friends. Some of my family I care about. But all of you have become my family. And I care about each and every one of you. And I want us all to make it through this. Love you guys so much. So until next time. Goodbye, you awesome bipeds, quadrupeds, and even the occasional dinosaurs. Good night.